Okay. Stream is active. Stream is active. Okay. You know, um, so I, you know, thinking about those types of things and thinking about how the pie is sliced up, you know what I mean? And then think about this, you know, this Quibi is, is going to launch, you know, that's uh, Katzenberg's latest thing mm -hmm. with, I think, Meg Whit Whitman. And mm -hmm. they have gone Hollywood on that. In other words, uh, Hollywood uh, filmmakers, you know, BBC, people like that making seven to 10 minute pieces of entertainment um, that are going to be put out there specifically for the phone. It's, it's, mm -hmm. it's meant to digest on your phone. Now, I'm sure you can do it on laptop. I'm sure. But they, all, <clears throat> they, they want the person who's got seven minutes in the back seat or they're waiting for the kids to come out to go in, hit the next episode of whatever they like, right? Mm -hmm and digest mm -hmm. that and it's made for that it's made for that piece you don't have to stop it in the middle you don't have to um go somewhere else you know what i mean you can take it mm -hmm. and take that a little amount and i find that fascinating i mean we are making that on the go um, um hey everybody how you doing how you doing i think we're live are we live tonio we are currently live yes Currently, Laura, right. great, great. So we used to have a behind the scenes camera, Richard, when we were in the studio, and that would just be a wide shot, but you can still hear us talking. As This is a little different. This is a little more more personal. So welcome everybody. This is Richard Ote. We got Tony there. You're seeing him in hey, the everyone. mix. And uh, you know, we're, we're, we're loading the show. Oh, I'm, I'm gonna share my show too, don't, Tony. That is a very good thing to do right now that's a very <laughs> good thing to yeah. share that show share and get show. that out there so i uh, better not blow my chance to do that here um and uh yeah okay i see us yeah we got we got a few viewers already and that is wonderful news welcome everyone welcome 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 and uh, we are going to go into the share mode here. I'm going to write a post. I'm going to send that to my news feed. I'm going to post that. Okay. I'm going to. I'm going to go back. I'm going to share that to my Bernie's grip and lighting. Right now. Okay. That is done. I'm posting that. And then I'm going to share this it to my sales page on set lighting. The, uh, this Facebook is when we need the uh, recording of your your video screen so you can show people how to do all this. That, you know what? That's exactly right. Exactly right. And we can do that down at the studio. We hook up our phones and laptops and all that stuff, you know, directly to that. So it's usually a pretty good thing. And um, um, maybe I'll do a watch party on um, Bernie's grip and lighting. Here, let me watch party. Quiet that down. Watch party. Maybe I'll do it on on set lighting. Actually, yeah. hold on. Okay, set lighting. Let me do a watch party here. It's funny. This is all the. It's like starting all over again. We have all the rig in studios but we can't go to the studios <laughs> no exactly so exactly. we're leading by example if you do what you can do and you can't do what you should do that's right that that's right get that out there. so i uh, better not blow my chance to do that all right it's funny this we have all the <clears throat> in studio Yeah. All right, looking good, everyone, looking good. All right, stand by, we're gonna be heading uh, into something pretty. <laughs> All, right, All right, here we go. See you guys on the other side. All right. Thanks, Tony. <laughs>
Hey everybody, welcome, Bernie's Apple Box, and here we are with our special guest, Richard Ote. Rich, what? Richard Rich, Ote. All right, hey buddy, Richie. how you doing? <laughs> Richie, Richie. Oh, yeah, Richie. yeah, no, it's it's all good. Yeah, uh, you know, yeah. with the name like Richard, you got a you got a bunch of different versions of of uh, what you could call me. <laughs> We'll keep well, it PC I here. You, <laughs> I want you to know you stand in a long, proud line of people who I've I've mispronounced their names at the beginning of this show. So you you are <laughs> you you are in very good company, my friend. I want you to welcome, know that. welcome to the family, huh? Thank you. <laughs> that's right. That's right, Richard. Richard and I have been uh, Facebook friends and LinkedIn friends for quite a while, and he knew so many people that I knew personally. We each had mutual friends. We kept going back and forth. Hey, we got to talk sometime. Love what you're doing. You know, and it was on both sides and stuff like that. Finally, I had 20 minutes before I had to run to L.A. And I thought, you know, this would be a great time to call Richie and uh, talk to him for a few minutes before I, I take off and, um, uh, you know, go on the road. I ended up talking two and a half hours with you on that phone call. I went all the way up to LA, kept you on the phone when I was running in to do a few things, I think. And we had the most interesting conversation I think I had had in years. I was totally blown away by what your history was, what you're currently doing, and your knowledge base was just like flooring me every five minutes. So um, it, that was the start of a very great friendship. Since then, we have stayed in, in, in close contact, mostly remotely, as things are to, even today. You know what I mean? Um, um, but I had to have you on the show, and I know... We're talking about plans of carrying this on, something that could even, I talk mainly to the film and video community. Uh, you talk to a lot of different communities, but I think we want to combine forces at some point here and talk to the thought leader community and the streaming community. And I think there's such exciting things. Welcome, Richard. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Bernie. Uh, appreciate it. Uh, great being here, being on your show, been loving watching it from afar. And it's funny when you mentioned the conversation, um, the 20 minute conversation that turned into a two and a half hour conversation. Anyone who knows me already knows uh, that was probably Richie talking the majority of that time. <laughs> but uh, but it wasn't. It was actually you. It was a very reciprocating uh, conversation and I felt the same way about you. Um, you've been doing great stuff. Again, mutual friend of ours, uh, Greg Flores, I think mentioned to you, hey, this is my buddy been doing podcasting. He's mentioning to me, um, you got to pay attention to Bernie. We had already been friends online, so it just deepened the relationship. But uh, I, first off, when I saw the little tag that you said smartest guy in the room i want to be the first one to throw my own self under the bus i am not even remotely the smartest guy in the room if i am the smartest guy in the room i try to find another room but i do notice and connect really smart people that are doing really cool things with other smart people that are doing really cool things and try to make great things happen and i think that's where we're kindred spirits, and I look forward to seeing how this relationship, as we do some of these other shows, um, off of, I don't know what we're, we haven't even really talked about what we would call it, but yeah, it's just the thought leadership angle, and especially in these times right now, when people are trying to figure out which direction to go, um, I think a little pause and a little breath and we might be sitting in the middle of a blessing right now, even though it doesn't look like it on the surface. You know, one thing I just want to remind you of, Rich, you're in that room alone right now, you know? So, so I, I still stand by, you're the smartest guy. In the world. So <laughs> I, I, uh, by default, <laughs> by default of nothing else, but no, Rich, just the, the truth is 
when I talk to you and I feel like, like, you know, I pride myself on not thinking like other people. Now that's not always pretty. Okay. It's not always something you're rewarded for not thinking like everybody else. But when we talked that day, I can tell you this, that I, I felt I was talking to a kindred spirit, somebody who, uh, was not afraid to challenge a status quo, someone who was not afraid to question what we were doing and why we were doing it. And that's mm. the, 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 the things you came up with that day and the, the way you've got my brain working that day was, I was so impressed with. So that's what I mean by the smartest guy in the room. And I'd give you that, I'd give you that one any day of the week too, my friend. Uh, well, I do appreciate it, but I'll definitely go with the um, think differently. There's no doubt in my mind. Huge Apple fan. Um, definitely believe in thinking different. Um, kind of maybe give a little bit of brief background on. Yeah, let's hear your story the, because I. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, it kind of goes hand in hand with how our conversation unfolded and why I think I think a little different. If you were to look at a resume or a CV as to what Richard wants to do with his life, you'd be like WTF, like, what does he want to do? He seems like he does a little bit of everything. And for those people in your community, I'm sure they're familiar with a Leatherman. And I kind of consider myself much like a Leatherman in the world of marketing. I know probably 80% of almost any subject you want to bring up, I'll gladly raise my hand when I don't know the other 20%. But I've been maybe by luck or intuition, smart enough to get around the people that know that other 20% or at least very close to it. So um, started out, worked in retail for let's just say 10 plus years in retail and then realized in in, in retail, it wasn't always necessarily the best product, but it was the one that got talked about on the news or the one that uh, there was no social media back then um, or the one that someone was talking about outside or the way it was displayed on the shelf. So like an in cap almost had more impact on the, the sales than the quality of the product. Now, you wanted the quality of the product to still be good or they wouldn't repeat the sales process. But I realized how the story, so I'll give you an example. If the news came out and said cranberries were the next new superfood, I would have said, damn, I, I, if I would have known that story was coming out, I'd have brought, bought 20 more cases of cranberries, right? Because I knew that was going to bring a bunch of people in to now buy the stock of cranberries. So I, I mm -hmm. just started realizing that story and positioning made such a big difference. And then I was, I've always been interested in television and film. And then from there, I, I, I went and I thought, you know, I want to, I want to learn more about storytelling and all this got on set one time and um, just got a job. Once I looked around, I was like, well, the entry level job that has the most ability to see the most stuff, but wasn't necessarily the most prestigious was stand in and uh, got a job and show down here, a Pensacola wings of gold with James Brolin and stood in, you know, I've got a whole bunch of stories there. It was kind of funny, but that's where we got to know a bunch of mutual friends, right? Uh, like Greg Flores, Greg, Greg Flores, Flores. Grip rings. Yep. yeah, exactly. And, um, you know, and, and, really got to see this comes back to the leatherman thing i would watch everything that everybody was doing i would watch the focus pullers i would watch the grips i would watch the electricians i would notice what the dp was saying and how he wanted to shoot it at a 2.8 and he was using this kind of lens and then i would literally kind of try to guess what's the background going to be where like, i would just use every opportunity to learn that I could. Um, and I'll just kind of 10 plus years of doing pretty much everything except hair and makeup in that industry, but that's where I started. Um, and then the actors writer strikes happened right about the time I was thinking about starting a family and thought, well, with those hours and not wanting 
someone else's decision of whether work was going to continue or stop affect my livelihood. Uh, where's the world's go? Where's the world going? And um, went into the world of e-commerce and online, and been in that space, but never really, never really lost during that whole time the experience that had followed me. So again, back to that comment of the CV or the. It, it wasn't the traditional path of someone knows, I want to be a DP and they're going to go and they're going to be a focus puller and then they're going to be the camera operator and then they're going to come up and deep. You know, like, there's various paths, as you know, but there's this right. kind of linear path that you follow. I knew from the very beginning, I'm not a linear guy for sure. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. I just knew the world was going to go online, but I also knew the general concept of communication and storytelling was going to really be heavy, if not more heavily focused in the future. So just think in general of what makes a good movie, Bernie. You, you mm -hmm. Don't let the person walk out of the movie the same way they walked in. You can make them laugh. You can make them cry. You can make them pissed. You can make them happy. You can, but just move them some way. And um, so, yeah, when, basically the local or regional offline world to storytelling world to online world, which leads us to today. Um, now really right help here. people in e-commerce and digital communication. I focus mostly on podcasting, but also live streaming, but it's, right. It's, and we're going to, we're going to be exploring both of us together are going to be exploring those two areas much more deeply you know, in, in the mm -hmm. near future. Um, now you podcast and I know, and you know, the funniest thing is I podcasted for maybe eight weeks. Okay. And then I had some guys build me a computer that would do a three camera shoot because I kept thinking I'm talking to a community that's visual yet. I'm only podcasting and knowing that there are, you know, um, marketing big marketing differences in the two because i think sort of podcasting is the audio which is there again if you're in your car in a place like los angeles mm -hmm. or any other city you're going to have more time to consume that than a normal mm -hmm. um you know you're competing more against uh uh radio now i wanted to do it because of the visual aspect because i could show reels and things like that and do which is you know, gone now. I do take this show and make a podcast out of it. I am uh, very fascinated by the world of podcasting at this time. Tell us your experience in that. You manage some shows and you also uh, co host a couple shows, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty much a, a serial co hoster. <laughs> um, <laughs> I have, I do two shows I do Reinvention Radio and Beyond Eight Figures. And reinvention radio is more um, people reinventing their life, taking it another direction. I co-host that and um, Beyond Eight Figures with Steve Olsher and Mary Goulet. And we do that show every Thursday. Uh, another show co-host, uh, the Equity Commerce Show. It's for um, basically e-commerce people that are just getting started. Usually just I think Shopify-ish. People probably more mm -hmm. familiar name. Yeah. Um, and then have another show, another e-commerce show with a company called Miva. They're more high end kind of shop Shopify plus or, or higher above that, uh, more enterprise level B2B. And so, uh, on those shows basically are talking to audiences that do the thing that I actually do, which is digital media and, and consulting for let's just call it a digital dot connector. It's really the customer mm -hmm. journey. Um, mm -hmm. And then also uh, rolling out another show, Purposeful Parentpreneurs, where we're, it's a, a show basically helping parents that are entrepreneurs and the things you deal with when you're in the house with the kids. And it's even more relevant than ever. So we push that show up sooner. And then I have a, another one that I'm doing that's my own on happiness and uh, mm -hmm. basically just building a business around you being you. And so uh, actually that reminds me, you came down when we had our last event, New Media Summit, right? where uh, brought in 
basically 40 top podcasters, call them icons of influence. And uh, they have many different followings from real estate to finance to digital nomads. And um, everyone in the audience all gets to pitch to try to get on their shows. And uh, everyone gets booked on the spot. Some get on multiple shows. And um, I invited you down because we're also doing the launch of Podcast Magazine. And that, right. now that I think about it, that actually might be one of the last events that actually happened. It was you know, 9-11 was the was. last day. Yeah. Yeah, I truly think it was because um, – we had already done social media marketing world the week before. And I, if that wasn't one of the, if it wasn't the last one, it was certainly one close to a, one of the last ones. The next few days after that, everything shut down. So yeah, yeah. I know it was pretty amazing. It was pretty amazing. And um, you know, that brings us really to our point here of what we're going to talk about today. And I think I, I really want to bear down on this with you because I know you have so many great thoughts on it, but is the new dynamic, the new dynamic, you know, uh, uh, let me take a moment, Richard, Tony, you're in there. Are, are, are you there too, buddy? I, I hope you are. I know you're running the show. So. <laughs> Somebody's got to be running it. Somebody's yep. got to do the work. Somebody's got to do more than just yak. How you doing, hey, buddy? Yeah, doing All great. Right. Doing great. Enjoying yeah. the conversation. It's fantastic. Yeah, thank you. You know what? This is, I, I think, a really great, great example, the three of us here right now, each from our respective homes. Before I did this studio, Tony was down at the studio with me. I would have a guest of some sort. They would come down. We would do it live, just as we're doing it now live. Um, but that person would physically have to come to my space to do it. That was our format. That was sort of the way we did it. We made exceptions. We tapped into people every now and then, you know, it yeah. was pretty regular, but we have had just like everybody else to totally throw out our old model yes. and completely embrace this new model, you know, and that's a micronism of what we're going to talk about today. You know, mm -hmm. um, what we have to really pull off now and what has gotten me, to be honest with you, so excited about what's happening right now. Now, there's a tragedy going on. There is a horrible thing in our world that's happening. Yes. I'm not talking about that horrendous part of it. You know, we all have really personal things that are um really bad my business i i mean i honestly sit here as i sit here this moment i do not know if i will have to go bankrupt in another month or not and that's the truth you know um believe me i have all kinds of emotional reactions to that okay this has been 20 years of my life there's all kinds of things i'm i'm not a spring chicken, you can tell by the, the color of the hair here, but, um, but that presents all kinds of problems for me. But you know what else it does? It presents all kinds of opportunities. And that's what we're going to spend the rest of this show talking about, what that new dynamic is. Tony, I know I put this video out. Can you show the video that I, I put out this week? Is th Would that be ready to throw up here? I can, actually. Awesome. I just want that to maybe be a beginning uh, salvo here of what we're really going to dive into. All right. Here we go, gents. All the All rules right. have been thrown out the window. Everything is different. It's a huge starburst of new ways to do things. I was 40 years old when I was a $50 a day PA. First time I was on set and worked as a PA, I came back, I wanted to work more and more. I started calling around and got into the business. What I didn't realize is my timing was so perfect. What it was, was that transition from film to video. 
Now, all movies were still shot on film, but in the industrial world, it was going to Betacam and it was going to tape decks. That was a huge advantage because I started working a lot. I started meeting a lot of DPs, some of whom were not used to working in the digital world. And I had been gaining knowledge in that world. Kept my nose to the grindstone, kept my ears open, my eyes open, and my mouth shut and moved up the ladder. Now is even and more important time for you to come into the industry. All the rules have been thrown out the window. Everything is different. Not one new medium to record on, but there's many. And the distribution of media exploded. We're still acting like movies are king. There is going to be an entirely another medium out there that you are going to flock to. And I don't know what it is. You don't know what it is. No one knows what it is. It is coming and it is going to be big, huge with opportunity. So whatever you're doing now, don't get too comfortable. There's going to be opportunity in the next 10 years that you or I can't even imagine. Go for it. So I, I want that to be the opening salvo here. Thank you, Tony. I want that to be the opening salvo here uh, between you and I, Rich, and talk about throwing out the rule book. In fact, burning the rule book, if you will. Mm -hmm. You know, um, because I really believe that uh, there is nothing stopping us at this point from entirely changing the dynamic of thought leadership, uh, personal narrow casting, um, taking, owning real estate, as long as we are breaking rules, as long as we are breaking down barriers. I com completely agree. Um, one of the things that I think about was, you know, kind of flashback I don't know when you really got into the live streaming part. I know you've been doing production for quite a while now, but yeah, 2017. Um, so first, first got into it back when there was companies called Meerkat and Periscope, and sure. I saw what was coming, and it was very obvious. But I, I used to crack a joke that it was going to put the Renaissance, or excuse me, the yeah, it was going to put the Renaissance period to shame as far as the amount of content created. It was just unfortunately, it was going to be a B-movie version of the Renaissance period for a while because we were going to be getting dirty, getting sloppy, trying to figure out all this new technology. I mean, here we are, you have, uh, you know, we have a trained professional here and prior to all this stuff happening, there were still new things popping up, right? And you still have your phone on. <laughs> yeah, sorry, <laughs> dude. Right? I know. No, it's all right. You turn up on set. You how much training you guys have, right? Uh, I, the but, only but thing this I, is... I said, I hope Tony didn't hear that. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I would have to call you out. It wouldn't be, it wouldn't be like me to not of call course. it out. And of I, course. Let me double check that mine's off while I'm doing it here. But, um, but I mean, this is a perfect example, though, of what you mean by burning the rule book is it's a little different when just one of us are going through something in our lives and having a personal challenge, as opposed to when the world is going through this and we all have. Now, it probably was always like that. It just didn't look like this because we didn't have something we could all have as a commonality that we were having the same challenge. But right. if we really think about it, there's always a challenge that's going on in somebody's life at any given point in their life, right? right? Family, health. Um, but right now, I think, and the reason why I brought up the uh, Periscope and Meerkat and all that, the, the old stuff was that even though I saw that that was what was going to be happening moving forward, it was going to be a combination of a few things. One, how long was it going to take till people actually wanted to watch something other than traditional TV programming? Two, how long was it going to take until the technology caught up? 
And then three, how long was it going to be until everyone got on the platforms yes. and was willing to watch, right? And so I think that's where we're in an interesting spot now because it's you we get to learn from our past experiences, but yet the rules are completely wide open. And now people are kind of almost forced. They're, they're obviously not forced. They can do in other things, but there's there's only a limited number of things that people can do right now. And so you have an opportunity. I have an opportunity. Listeners and people who are watching the show have an opportunity more than ever to potentially put their flag out there on the thing that they want to do, their gift that they bring to the world and present it in such a way and, and have the platform to which they can find their audience. And when I say it like that, it it still feels kind of strange for me because we're so used to like it needing to be, you know, in every theater. And if it, did, if it, if it didn't right. sell out and do $200 million in the theaters, then it yeah. wasn't right. But, but yeah. it was billion dollar, multi-million dollar corporations making it billion dollar, multi corporations, uh, distributing it. And also the marketing that went on. It was you never watched Star Wars and just said, "Oh, Star Wars is in the theater today." You watched rap buses go by, rap trains go by, billboards, TV ads. You know, it was everywhere. And now, right, basically, with this and the cost the of your cell phone plan, yeah, you could get yeah. started. Yeah, yeah, and in a few days. Uh, Somebody, uh, Michael Kanowitz and uh, not Kanowitz, but Michael uh, Katzenberg and mm -hmm. uh, Meg Whitman are launching QB, which is oh, made right. by professionals, by you know, with you know, like Hollywood content for lack of a better term, um, for the phone at seven to ten minute bites. And it's made, those are made to hold that way, not pieces of a show, but actual episodes. Yeah are in that way and you know that's a direct salvo right there from hollywood by hollywood players that say we're not on the phone and we've got to get on the phone and that says to me that's and there's a classic example and and i gotta hand it to them too i'm not always big in my praise of of the big corporate entities and and all of that of anything i hold them to a i hold them to a much higher standard but I've got to say, they saw the writing on the wall, you know, uh, and and took hold and did something very bold because I think they understood just as well. They have to break some rules right now. They have to start tearing down walls between you, what they do and the eyeballs that that they want, you know. Um, yeah. Let, let me just go that because you brought up this very, very, very good point of, oh, and this is so generational for me. You know what I mean? I grew up at the advent of TV. You know, uh, we had a TV probably when I was like two years old. And, you know, that was in 1953, right? And not everybody owned a TV even then. People would come over to watch the TV. I remember that. And one of the things that it always were, you were so passive. You were a passive consumer of it. You, you too, for, for many, many, many years in my life, we accepted what came over the TV as fact. And we never questioned why we were watching it, why we were seeing what we were seeing. We never com questioned even the commercials. We thought they were funny or stupid or whatever. You know what I mean? But we never co even questioned their validity. We were totally passive consumers. Now we are in the era of the self-producer. And there was a time where we, we have been a self-programmer. So now we're in the area of self-programming in other words, we have so many other choices about what we are going to consume other than t than movies or TV shows or whatever. We are self 
we are self programmers. So we program some Facebook, we program some Instagram, we program some LinkedIn, we program some MSNBC, we program some CNBC or Netflix or any of those other things. We, we program, we record, we play back, we do all that. We are in the beginning stages of the self producer at this point. And I think that is something that is a real onus uh, on not my generation, but it's a real onus on the millennial generation, certainly. Anybody in the age group from 45 on back, you know what I mean? Because you are going to be defined now about what media you produce, you know? Mm-hmm. And I think that's that's such an exciting thing. Just such an exciting thing and a very challenging thing too. Well, it's it's interesting you bring that up, self-producing. I, I don't know what it was that you said there that triggered this for me, but it really flashed me back to one of the things that's being broken right now as far as the rule book goes that you refer to is we – we were entrepreneurs as as a society for a long time. I mean, a, a lot of the names that people had, like Smith, that, right? You know, so like the things that people did were the jobs that they did. And it wasn't until the Industrial Revolution that everyone kind of really, I'm going to go work for someone else. Now, granted, there was always people doing that and there was kings. Right. And, I don't go too back far in history, but I almost yeah. feel like there's going to be a rebirth of entrepreneurs and that being said, I want to clarify, like, that doesn't mean you have to make the next General Motors or Uber or you have to, it's got to be some gigantic thing. If you really just look at math and really build a business around you being you, um, I don't know if you ever heard of uh, Kevin Kelly that did Thousand thousand True Fans. I don't know if you've ever heard I of that I did not, phrase. no, no. But, but um, you know, really let's just say you had a thousand true fans and it right. didn't matter whether you talked about Legos or making movies or how to bake or training dogs. Like we, we can take some of the most simple things that, that aren't necessarily changing the world across the world, but it might change your world. Uh, so if you just did math and you have a, a thousand people that just love Bernie and love everything mm-hmm. that Bernie's about and the way Bernie looks at things and the way Bernie looks at the world, how much actual money do you need on a monthly basis from each of those thousand people to completely change your life? Not much. Right. Not you know, much, I mean, no. Ten ten dollars is is ten thousand dollars a month, right? And so I don't want to make this be all about money, but this is really about just right. You're breaking the rule book and look at looking at things not necessarily as I go to this job for fifteen dollars an hour or thirty or fifty. Like there's only so much you can do, but if you're just going out there and you're producing content, and mm-hmm. and and that being said, here we happen to like video and audio, but it can be produced in many ways. I, I, I always call it like you just, you want to make a show, but a show could be an email newsletter. It's just a place where mm-hmm. people show up. It could be a blog, mm-hmm. it could be a newsletter, it could be a podcast, it could be a video, it could be anything, but it's you're doing your thing, you're sharing your knowledge, and then you're just building this tribe again. In this particular case, I'm talking about a thousand true fans, um, and it's really more to put it in the context that you don't have to amass that same following that I mentioned earlier. That you have to be in every theater, and you have to spend millions of dollars, and you have to have millions right. of dollars worth of production equipment. And you know, you literally can change your life by just believing that what you have to say is worthy and hopefully it really is worthy of something um i i believe most people do have something worthy that could that could change the, uh, a lot of people's lives absolutely for the better. absolutely um, yeah but it's going to come back to one of those other points too like what's what's scary to me sometimes or could be potentially scary is 
we were already a consumer nation of where like consumerism in general is a new recreation. And so actually getting people to believe that they are creators and that they make something special and stop having to look at the fancy shining other things that everyone else is making and kind of stopping consuming other people's stuff all the time. So it sounds counterintuitive. I'm a, I'm a, I create content and I would love people would listen right. to the content and take action on things I said, but it, you know, we're both fans of Gary V and we've heard him say multiple times, yeah. man, I wish yeah. you consumed my content half as much, but actually took action on what I'm telling you to do. Right. Like, you know, I, I just, as, as you're talking, Richard, I'm ready to explode, dude. I'll just tell you, I'm ready to explode. Because one of my biggest bugaboos in this world, you know, and that's an old man term too, um, uh, but in, in this world is we are raised, programmed like cattle to be employees and consumers. We mm -hmm. have to change our dynamic of our self-worth, okay? We are creators we are creators and sellers, okay, of who we are. That is the dynamic. That is the new dynamic. This is no longer a world that you just consume in. Now, take you and I, for example, of course we consume Gary Vee. You know what I mean? Mm. Because Gary Vee is a food source for us, right? We consume mm -hmm. our food sources. But then what we do is take that energy, take that information, take that intellectual capacity that we have and tell our consumers what that is. And I mean that in a mm -hmm. very simple way. You know what I mean? Gary Vee, how many times have we said, just do what I do and you'll do it. You keep waiting to know the secret, watch what I do and you do it. You know what I mean? That yeah. is what I, I tell people all the time in my world watch what i do and do that you know what i mean oh but you're you're a, you know you've got to so you're so far down the line says i wasn't far down the line when i started you know what i mean i was nothing when i started i i was in fact my own ignorance stopped me more than anything else you know so and once again i do take it generationally you know what I mean? I'm mm -hmm. not talking to my generation. I'm not talking to my people. I'm not talking to the guy who is just looking out to finish the next 10, 15 years. I'm talking to everybody under 45 right now, you know, and you have to get out there and make it happen. You have to sell your knowledge. I, I will tell you, and you can tell you you hit a nerve with me, Rich. Um, uh, but but I'm telling you, everyone underestimates themselves. They underestimate themselves by not half. They only they underestimate themselves by ninety ninety five percent. You are much more interesting than you think you are. You have much better thoughts than you think you do. And even if you don't, you can develop your own way of a critical thinking. And you can tell people about that. And you don't need a big amount. You can take a individual. Look, that thousand, that thousand people that you were talking about, Rich. Okay, let's... Let me draw a picture for you. And we, we spoke of that, about this before the show, too. If you've got the latest James Bond release, right, and that's, say, two and a half hours, right, you can go into the theater, you can spend your 25 bucks a ticket, you can buy the popcorn and drinks for 40 bucks, and then you can go sit down and have that really rich big screen um, experience. Then it comes on Netflix, and you can do that again with James Bond, okay? Now, you've had James Bond for about a total 
of five hours. And that's probably going to be it for the year of that particular James Bond movie. If I am out as an influencer and I'm across several platforms, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, uh, you name it, whatever it is, and I'm doing posts, I'm sending out pictures, I, I'm writing my, my thoughts in a blog or maybe a, a regular email, a letterhead, something like that, and I'm coming on with video bits every day or every other day for two or three minutes of, and, and, uh, of my thoughts, those thousand people have consumed you probably three, four, five times over that James Bond movie, okay? So who is more relevant to them, right? Yeah. Yeah. You know? No, I can... You know, you monetize it in any number of ways. They can pay you direct or you can pay you can get paid for that influence, which is not a new model. But I think a lot of people don't really understand an influencer model. Yeah, it's it's interesting. You brought up a couple of things there I wanted to re refer to. Um, it kind of thinks of breaking the rules, a little bit of how long you can get, garner attention. Um, I'm, I'm blanking on what his first name was, but the, so Miley Cyrus's dad, Billy Ray Cyrus. Yeah. Um, the, his manager was actually also, I just remember him known as the captain. I'm blanking on what his actual first name was. Yeah. He was Elvis Presley's manager too. And Kurt, one of the things yeah, he, Colonel Tom Parker. Hey, they, or was it yeah, um, Colonel Tom Parker? Was, I, I'm almost I'm almost positive, um, but regardless, the the general concept will will still ring true regardless of his actual. Right. He said it was basically one of those ones where if if you if you walk off the stage and you feel comfortable with what you were wearing, like uh, there's a, there's a few people have said it various different ways. Like you probably didn't go big enough. So why am I even bringing that up is because there's all kinds of different things that get attention from people. Um, and no matter what, when you're doing something that's getting attention, you're going to get love and you're going to get hate and you're going to get misunderstanding and you're going to get understanding and you're going to, you're going to get just as many viewpoints as there are people in the world, right? We could have a hundred people in a room, have them read an article, ask them what that article is about. We're going to get a hundred different opinions about what that article is about. And so I think sometimes, um, kind of bringing it back to your, uh, you, you might not be able to, entertain them for as long but you got them 365 days a year it it really comes back to building something around you being yourself because unlike the james bond one if you don't build it around you being you it's going to be exhausting it's already going to be exhausting yeah. enough running a business but if you have to act that whole time and you have to pretend that you're somebody else that you're not Good effing luck. It won't work. It won't it's work. It's not going to work. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, you can act for a couple hours. <laughs> no, but you you can you can do it for a little while. You can pretend, but first of all, it's not going to come off across authentic because it's not authentic. You know what I mean? And frankly, mm -hmm. you're every time you go on, you're depleting storage. You're not building it up. I know whenever I have a conversation with someone like you or, you know, or somebody in my industry, in other words, that's filling me up. I have more to say now. It's not a depletion, you know. And also, I, I think, and this is, comes back to where people underestimate themselves, and I think this is so terrible. They forget what makes them human. And I'll tell you, a big part of that is living in this consumer society that we live in, you know, and, and that expectation of being nothing more than a consumer for society. You know, the mm -hmm. best thing you could do is qu question everything. Question everything. Look, you... 
you know, I'll, I'll tell you, I, I graduated, and I'm quite proud of this fact, with a 1.2 grade average from high school, okay? Um, now, that's about as low as you can go and still graduate, I think. You know, <laughs> I, I mean, it, it, they're just no lower, you know what I mean? After that, <laughs> you're, you're below one. I, I don't even know if they graduate you. But you have no idea how long I felt shame about that, you know? And uh, that shame, I internalized, and that wasn't my only problems. There were other problems at home, things like that. But the, I internalized all of that, you know what I mean, and tried to make up for it. Until I realized the reason for that was my rejection of what was happening to me all around me within my life. It was just, I took it out on the school if you will. I was the class clown. I was always talking. I was always the craziest, wildest one that wanted attention. All of those things. I realized that's why I did badly in school. I also realized that that I was trying to save myself. And for that, I am very proud. And I did save myself. I became a unique thinker. I, I thought outside of the group, and that ultimately not only saved me, but that set me on a trajectory to rise higher and higher. Now, all that was a long, long time ago. But I'm always in, internalizing that it's not the things that you're rewarded for that are going to do you the best things. The immediate cookie they give you is not worth the price of admission for what you pay for it. And that is how I look at my life. And there's a lot of people like me, you know, um, you know, I think, it, well, you know, classically, I mean, Bill Gates dropped out of Harvard to finish Microsoft, right? Now, that's another sort of extreme there. But that guy believed in himself. He did not do the smart move. The smart move was just, oh, finish school and then go do this. You know what I mean? He had the burning desire. He wasn't interested in just being another consumer. He wanted to make something. And I think on those extreme ranges, that is what you have to do. And it's even more important now than ever before. That's a great point. Well, and, and sometimes you're going to be doing things that are the right thing to do that you're for what you want to accomplish, but you're not, it's not going to feel like it along the way, or it's not going to look like it along the way. So here's a perfect example. Yes. We'll go back to what's going on in the world right now. Um, and this is a, this is a slippery slope to go down right here because I know there's a lot of people having a lot, Take the a chance. lot of problems, but I'm, I'm willing, I'm willing to go here. Um, people probably should have been saving more. And I know there's someone sitting there going, yeah, well, people weren't making enough. They couldn't miss it. Yeah. Well, they also didn't need the latte. They also didn't need this. So, so why am I bringing this up? If we just go right back to buying stuff right away and we go back to work and everything worked like it, it could look like a V recovery. It, who knows whether it will be a V, a U, an L, like who knows what the recovery is going to look like, but we will recover. Right. Um, right. Because I mean, and, and I'll come back to that in one second, but we've recovered past everything. Like we reference the bubonic plague. We reference the Spanish flu, world war one, world war two, the great depression, um, the, the housing crisis, nine 11, Y2K, like, all of these things look like it was the end of the world when it was happening. And here we are today talking about it, but I'm not, I, yeah. have, I have empathy and I know some people are having some really challenging, challenging times right now. But like I referenced earlier, there could be some really good things that come out of this and good habits. Now I'm going to come back to that recovery. For instance, there's going to be people who say, get back out, spend as fast as possible. Because in some people's narrative, that's going to make the recovery look better. Other people are going to say, yeah, get back out and support local businesses, but you should probably be saving some. Well, what's the difference? A, a recession, money didn't 
disappear. People didn't actually start burning money. No pun intended, Bernie. Um, mm-hmm. They didn't start just <laughs> burning money, right? Like it, it's somewhere. It's just they're deciding. I don't want to. I don't want to spend as much right now. I'm going to hold back. And so, each individual person is going to have to find that place to play, and that's where the challenge is going to be. You, if you want to expand, you need to expand. But sometimes right. holding a little bit back is also the right thing to do because if if something say this research is again some you know next year in the fall or another time around like wouldn't it be nice that they had a little more sitting there you know if everybody's yeah. always taught put it all back in your business spend grow consume like it sounds great and it is great when it's great but then it's not great when it's not great yeah. So I yeah. think that's going to be the challenge is like, where is that balance? And each individual person has to find that unique balance for themselves and be able to have self-awareness to look inside and say, okay, I've saved some and all's good, but am I still playing small? Could I play a little bigger? And that, that's actually something I'm going through right now. Like I'm, yeah. you know, yeah. where can I, where should I put the brakes and where should I put the gas? Sometimes you got... Yeah. You're doing it at the same yeah. time, you know. Well, you know what? I, I'll, I'll tell you, and, and um, here, here's the thing that I think, and, and, all this, and I think it's always good advice to be financially sound. Now, I am one guy who is, you know, uh, always put money back in the business. Last few years, I've probably been living a little larger than, than my norm. You know what I mean? Uh, times have been good in doing that. I could have saved a little more for sure. But I would like to say, too, in this consumer society that we live in, start making your own priorities. Screw your neighbor. I mean, in the sense that if somebody's impressed with you by the lifestyle, throw it in their face. You don't have to keep up with anybody. The standards, look, I'm in the media marketing business. I'm the guy who is making a commercial about the carrot being held out there just in front of you a little farther all the time. You know, I, I know that world. I know that aspirational, emotional incentive that is on commercials and it's all around us in the store. You have to have the latest fashion. You have to have the newest thing. Nobody says you need that crap. Nobody says you need it, you know? Start being a little more circumspect, you know, start being smarter about what you spend your money on and whether you Mm. really need it or not. You know, I think that's, you know, that's one thing. Tony, how are we doing on time, brother? Uh, Well, you're obviously not getting my message. You get my messages on that side, man? (laughs) No, I didn't. Not at all. No, no, I haven't seen it. We'll have to work on that one. We got about five minutes left and I wanted to take a second. We have a, a question. Yeah, we have a couple of comments. Yes, please, uh, please. No, I haven't seen anything. Please, please <laughs> give them to him. I didn't mean to ignore that. Yeah, so I just wanted to acknowledge Andy Cooper uh, saying, wow, I haven't seen Richard in decades. Hey, guys, how we doing? What's up, Andy? Andy? Thank you, brother. Andy <laughs> gave me one of the nicest phone calls I think I've ever gotten. He told me of a post that I did, and this is coming right back, that inspired him to go out, research, and he started an entire new business on it. And I never knew about it for two years until he called me just a few weeks ago. Andy, that that call changed my life, brother. Thank you. Thank <laughs> That's you. That's awesome. Uh, sending Gerard Black. Hey, Richard, yes. long time no see. <laughs> ah, what's up, Gerard? Right. Another one. Um, uh, Jason Franco, awesome. and I know Bernie was just on Jason's show a couple days ago. Yeah, Jason. Great... Yeah, we're going to yeah. have to have Jason on. Yeah, yeah I know. Yeah. We sh- you shared it on your timeline, I believe, right? Yes, Bernie? Yes, absolutely. Okay, yeah, so the check show's it out. It's a great interview. For Jason. Yeah, thanks a lot. It was a lot of fun. Thank you, sir. <laughs> yeah, let's see. My conda, Bernie getting hungry? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for watching, everyone. Thanks for watching. Yeah, uh, And then we absolutely. have a question. This is not all going to fit because it's kind of long, so... Bear with me here. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, Matthew Villafane, thanks for watching. Appreciate you tuning in today. 
Uh, my first gig was hired as an electric at 18 years old. I've fallen in love with this department since. What are some methods to really get a hold of those with hiring power besides word of mouth? You know what I would say to that? Just my quickest, fastest advice here. Take those call sheets that you've saved or have on your email. Go back down and call every grip and lighting guy that you worked with. Give him a phone call. Ask him how he's been doing. Let him know you're always looking for work and ready to go. And whoever the DP was on that, if you've got a direct line, call the DP, say hi, introduce yourself, just say loved working with you and uh, would love to work with you again sometime. You know, you can do the same thing with the production company or the line producer. I would also call the makeup artist and just said it was great working with you. If you have that relationship and you, you had some interaction with them, uh, and, and say that because the producers are always talking to the makeup people about who they like to work with. Um, so those are the quickest, quickest advice I could give you right now, besides just word of mouth. And you know what? Put on your Facebook, I'm looking for work. And post pictures of you working and doing things in the sets you're on and the things you're interested in. Yeah, be aggressive. Oh. Uh, there we are. Hey, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, join yeah. groups. There are so many groups on Facebook uh, that are dedicated to production. A lot of departments have their own groups. There's a lot of social media, social socialization going on on Facebook. Yeah, yes, absolutely. Who else, Tony? Uh, that works us through. Yeah, that's right. We're okay. almost done. We only got a couple of minutes left in the show. Okay, Richard, tell us what you're up to, brother. Oh, well, besides the projects we have in the works. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, we, no, can, really, you know, we can talk about that, too, you know. Yeah, I mean, one of the things, and I could even kind of go back to the last, I, I was looking at something else real quick and didn't notice his name, the, the kid who was getting into the business, uh, kind of yeah. refers to that. Um, one of the things that you can do when you're not, where you want to be is literally just document your process of going through that and can't really underestimate, right. you know, what that means. So him going online saying, Hey, I'm working on this. I'm trying to work my way up the ranks. These are some shows I've been working on. This is, this is, uh, maybe he's watching YouTube videos and showing people how to do lighting setups and trying different yes. things, right? Exploring in front of other people and showing them the process you're going through and just owning up that you're not there yet, interviewing more people that have been there. Uh, I mean, I just, I keep thinking back to Oprah. Oprah didn't start out as an expert, but she yeah. interviewed a bunch of experts and now yeah. she spins out experts, right? I mean, yeah. I don't yeah. know how they actually yeah. monetize it, uh, but, you know, Dr. Oz, Dr. Phil, like these people kind of all came through and she helped make even bigger. So just yeah. documenting the process that you're going through. Um, and that's one of the things that, you know, what what we're going to be helping people with moving forward is, is really trying right. to touch touch into thought leadership in general and really how thought leaders can use their knowledge and their experience in the things that they've gone through and kind of help uh, dispel a lot of the myths that are out there. Um, and just mm -hmm. one thing only I want to touch on, I don't know if it's, is it a hard cut, Tony, by the way? No. I forgot to ask that part. Okay. Um, no, we have, we have time we'll we go are, as long as we want. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, just a quick little mention going back because it's it might have sounded conspiracy theory in the beginning when we were talking about how we've been trained and pushed into this thing. People in general are just trying to help the situations they're in. So the reason the school system is set up the way it was is they all of a sudden decided we have factories. And if we have factories, like – we're going to need these people to sit in these spots in these for a long period of time doing redundant things over and over again. So how do we do that? Well, we're going to set this up. And again, not conspiracy theory. It was 
let's see, we'll take these people off the farms. We got to, they're, they're used to doing a bunch of stuff, being distracted by cows and plants and all kinds of things and living life. And we got to, taking that person from that place and putting them right in a factory probably wouldn't have worked out. So here we're going to put them in this place called the school, the way it was set up. And we're going to teach them to kind of shut up and listen to other people and wrote memory and do things over and over again. We're, we're living in a totally different society, right? Completely, now. Completely, completely different. I mean, I'm not saying don't memorize some things, but when you can, look up in your phone and, and ask Google things that are useless to clog, clog your brain with. It's really more important to have empathy, to learn communication skills, mm. to learn how to think and why you want to think to kind of go back to the, the, with your questioning of things, but yet keeping in mind that, and I want to set just the kind of good tone on both sides of the thing here. What I, what I'm loving about what's going on right now is right before this happened there was a lot of us versus them going on in the world and there still is and there's still going to be but for the first time in what i've seen in the last little chunk of time politically it appears like we're starting to realize what we should have always remembered which is we're all in this together we're all sitting in one common place which is this earth and what I'm hoping people get out of this is you're going to build a business around you being you or a life around you being you, but so are other people. And so just remember that they're going to be doing the same and that it doesn't make them wrong or you right just because of what you're doing. Just stay the course no, this too shall pass, right? I'm combining a few different thoughts trying to close this stuff out, but it's the rule book is wide open. The canvas is clear, like paint the life you want to paint now. And I just, I wish everyone the best because I know people are going through some tough, tough scenarios right now and just, you know, reach out to, to, to me, to Bernie, to other people that are, you know, trying to stay positive and really focus on, just moving forward and realizing some of these things are going to come back and come back stronger than ever. Some of them aren't going to come back and just be very cognizant and self-aware and um, realistic enough that I hope you, you, if you know your industry isn't coming back, you know, take this time to learn something new. Awesome. That's awesome. I'd like to just sum it up and tell you, that the world is coming back it's going to be better than ever and richard and i and tony are all going to help you get there okay and for that i will say good night thanks a lot everybody for joining bernie's apple box and we'll see you next friday at two o'clock thanks guys